والله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم Accept our faith in the hereafter Save us then from the hell fire Admit us to God is Through which rivers flow Through which rivers flow This program is sponsored by the Spai Charity Foundation. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear viewers, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome and thank you for joining us again in our journey of the hereafter. In this episode, we shall talk about the last destination of us believers. That is the great award, the abundant recompense, the great and true success, that is Jannah. With our distinguished and honored guest, Sheikh Man Kusa, so please help me in welcoming him and begin today's episode. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Kusa, and welcome to our program. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Abdul Jabbar. So Sheikh, let's talk about this, the true success for the believers, that is the Jannah. What can you tell us about Jannah? How is it different from the blessings of this life? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala khayri al-anbiya wal mursaleen, nabiyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. All praises be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who created the paradise and prepared it for the believers. Peace and blessings be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was the first one to enter paradise and to give permission for, for others to enter paradise. As for uh, the blessings of in, the, in paradise, al-Jannah, uh, it's uh, no way compared to the blessings of this life. In fact, we cannot comprehend and visualize the blessings of paradise as they are. Uh, the names we are told about things in paradise, though the names are familiar to us, the names of the fruits and so on, but they are in essence quite different from what we have uh, in this life. The general uh, rule is what the Prophet ﷺ told us in Al-Hadith Al-Qudsi, that is the sayings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I have prepared for my righteous servants what no eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard of, and never crossed the mind of any man. Then the Prophet sallam said, If you wish, recite the verse, uh, فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنْ No soul would know what is hidden for them of joy as a reward for what uh, they have done. The Prophet ﷺ gave a comparison which shows in fact that there is no comparison between this life and the day after. He said that, you know, that space that a whip and you know a whip is, is quite thin. He said the space that a whip takes in paradise is better than all or this life and all what is in this life. So there is no comparison of the blessings that is prepared for the believers and what uh, they have here. And let me conclude by this other very informative hadith by the Prophet Sallallahu who said that the poorest man 
who had the most tough, you know, the toughest and hardest, uh, you know, s- s- life in this life, will be brought on the Day of Judgment and will be just immersed once in paradise. Just, you know, a quick immerse in paradise to taste the blessings. And then he would be asked, have you ever seen any hardship? And you say, never. So, you know, one immerse in paradise made him forget all the miserable and poor and uh, hard hardship he had in his life. So, Sheikh, you said that the blessings in Jannah are beyond description and have no equivalence to what we have in this life. Could you give us an example of what this could mean? The Prophet ﷺ gave us a few examples uh, to illustrate that whatever a man wishes in paradise will get it in an amazing way. He mentioned the example of a man. He said, if any one of you or if a man wishes to have a child in paradise, then all the process of pregnancy, delivery, and the child being grown up to the age that the man likes will all happen in a very short while. He also gave another example. He once was sitting with his companions and there was one of the Al-A'rab. Al-A'rab are the Bedouins, those people who used to live in the desert. So the Prophet ﷺ said that, he's telling his companions that a man in paradise wished to have, wished to plant. So he said to, he asked his Lord to give him permission to plant. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, why do you want to plant? I mean, you have everything around. The man said, I just want, you know, to plant for the sake of plant, planting. I just love to, to make it. So he will start planting. He will he'll put the seed in the soil. And in no time, they, they, it will grow up and become huge, as huge as a mountain. And it will be time for the harvest. Uh, the, uh, the Bedouin who was ne- say, s- sitting next to the Prophet Wasallam said, Oh, Prophet of Allah, I assure you that this man is either from Quraysh, from Mecca, or an Ansar from Medina, because these are the people who love farming. We, the Bedouins, are not used to it. And the Prophet ﷺ laughed at that. So, Sheikh, now coming to talk about, about Jannah, let's first begin from the outside. <coughs> we learned in the previous episode from you that Jahannam has seven gates. Are we similarly told about the number of gates of Jannah? Yes, uh, indeed, the Prophet ﷺ told us that Jannah has eight gates or eight doors, thamaniyat abwab. This is explained in a hadith in al-Bukhari where the Prophet ﷺ said that the paradise has eight gates. Uh, the people of prayers will be invited from the door of prayers. The people of fasting will be invited from the door of fasting, which is, by the way, called ar the people of charity will be invited from the door of charity. The people of jihad will be invited from the uh, door of jihad, and so on. So, so there are aren't, these, uh, yes. Uh, aren't these things like fasting, praying, etc., what all Muslims do? Yes, true. But it, what's meant here is that these people are doing a lot of those voluntary, those as, uh, you know, extra uh, voluntary deeds that they become, you know, you know, so some people are quite... They offer a lot of prayers, extra to their obligatory prayers. They are used to give a lot of charity. So these people are known to be to have this as one of their uh, characteristics, paying a lot of charity or praying and so on. Sheikh, you said each door has a, a characteristic for it, the kind yeah, of people. Yeah, designated for some Designated for a kind yes. of people. Yes. So can someone, be, uh, can, can someone be invited by more than one door? In fact, the same question was uh, asked by Abu Bakr al-Siddiq anhu, when he heard the hadith. He said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, would anybody be invited from all doors? The Prophet ﷺ said, Yes, and I hope you, Abu Bakr, be one of them. So was that particular to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu or anybody no. else? No. In fact, we have one great hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever performs, performs wudu and do it well, and then he uh, uh, looks at the heavens and say, أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله. The eight gates of paradise will be open for him to enter from whichever he wishes. So as you see, it's a general invitation for all, and we all can have it. Subhanallah, that's great. Uh, Shay, can you please repeat that again? أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له 
وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله So now, Sheikh, that's about the entrance and the outside of Jannah. Now, let's get in. What do we find inside Jannah? Inside the Jannah, the Prophet ﷺ told us that the soil of Al Jannah is of musk. The people, uh, the small stones of Al Jannah, are from uh, rubies and pearls. Uh, he told us about an amazing structure of a tent in Al Jannah. He said. Uh, a tent in Al Jannah would be made of one huge pearl that is hollow from inside and it's 60 miles long. He told us about the uh, rooms and structures and buildings in Al Jannah. He said the bricks of those rooms are golden brick next to a silver brick and the filling between the bricks is uh, musk as well. Sheikh, so how can we, uh, has Prophet ﷺ advised us on how we can build those houses in Jannah for us in this life? Yes, uh, he said for example, whoever builds a mosque for the sake of Allah, Allah will build him a house in Al Jannah. He also told us that whoever observed, observes and, and you know, is regular on offering the Sunnah prayers, the 12 rak'ahs in, in the day and the night, you know those Sunnah before Dhuhr and after Dhuhr and after the 12 ones, Whoever prays 12 rak'ahs, those sunnah prayers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will build for him a mosque, a, a, a house in paradise. So again, this is available for all who, you know, will work for it. Sheikh, we read in many places uh, in the Quran that there are rivers in Jannah that flow underneath. Uh, what are these rivers? If you recall, when we talked about Al-Hawd, the pool on the gathering land. Yes. The water of that pool, if you recall, we mentioned that's coming from Al-Kawthar, Al -Kawthar, which is a river in Al-Jannah. So Al-Kawthar is one of the rivers of Al-Jannah given to the Prophet ﷺ. There are plenty of other riv rivers. Uh, in Surah Muhammad, Allah Azzawajal told us that there are rivers of running water, rivers of milk, rivers of honey, rivers of wine. In addition to the rivers, there are springs. We are told about Tasneem, about Salsadil, about Kafur. So these are some of the springs that are there in paradise. Sheikh, we also read that in Jannah we can find all kinds of fruits like Ruman, that's pomegranate, grapes, palms. Are these similar to what we have in this world? First of all, there are I mean, all sorts of fruits in, in Jannah. These are just for some examples. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فِيهِمَا مِنْ كُلِّ فَاكِهَةٍ زوجان. They have pair of fruits of all fruits. So all fruits are there. Now, of course, they are nothing similar to what we have in this life, not in the taste and so on. Uh, only the names are similar, but the tastes, the appearance are quite different. Let me give you some aspects in which they are different. For example, our Prophet uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that about the, the, the trees of Al-Jannah, that is, their fruits are everlasting. They are not seasonal like the trees we have in this life. And their shades also is always there, all the time. And the Prophet ﷺ told us about one tree that has huge shade that if somebody riding on a running horse and runs for, uh, I think, 100 years or so, if I record the number right, then he would not cross the shade. So it's, it's quite, uh, you know, great and quite different from we have what we have in, uh, in this life. And one more thing about those fruits is they are قُطُوفُ هَدَانِيَةً They are made close and approachable to the dwellers of paradise. So if they are walking, they can pick it. If they are sitting, they can pick it. If they are lying, lying down, they can pick it. It's made, you know, approachable and close to them to pick at any time. Jazakallah khairan, Shaykh. That's all I had in mind for this episode. Thank you for sharing all this beautiful information with us. Wa yaakum inshallah abdul jabbara. And uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us all among the dwellers of the paradise and to enjoy, you know, the blessings uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for his believers. And remember that all what we mentioned is but examples. The general rule again is everyone gets whatever, whatever he wishes. I prepared for my servants what no eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard, and never crossed the mind of any man. So let's just work for that and inshallah we'll get all what we wish. 
So dear brothers and sisters, here was Sheikh Man Kosa with us talking about the blessings in Jannah. Please join us again in our next episode we'll ask, where we will ask our Sheikh about the dwellers in Jannah and how will they be living in Jannah and what will be the blessings they will be receiving in Jannah. وَأَخِرُ الدَّوَانَ أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ وَعَلَيْكُمْ السَّلَامُ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ This program is sponsored by the SPI Charity Foundation. Accept our faith in the hereafter. Save us there from the hill fire. Admit us to God through which rivers flow, through which rivers flow.